You should have your cameras on and be muted the entire class. Okay, so need that worked out unless we've made other arrangements, but no one in this class has made other arrangements. There we go. Now we're like, I'm seeing pretty ear faces, starting to see faces again. Still missing a couple. Okay. Um, use the raise hand feature. Um, if you want to partic um, participants list to ask questions, you can mute and unmute yourself. I'd let you do that quite often. Um, if you have to participate. So if I do an open ended question and I pause, you can either raise your hand or just unmute yourself and talk. Just remember to mute yourself after you finish your, your input. Um, most of our backgrounds look pretty cleaned up. Some of us might want to work on that. Dress code is still the dress code of the school handbook. So you should still need to be that. You must be an active learner. So make sure that you're participating, taking notes, asking questions, answering questions on time, et cetera. So make sure you're actively participating. Um, you can send me a private chat if something like you need to go to the restroom or you need to do something like that during this time. Okay. Um, also, Make sure, I, I do a lot of thumbs up. So I'll ask you if you're participating, show me a thumbs up. And you can either do it like this in the screen and keep your thumbs up, or you can use the um, action button on your um, thing to do the thumbs up. Um, so you have those couple action buttons that you can do. Um, I use that quite a bit. So be prepared to recognize your where the thumbs up symbol is on there. Um, so that's the nonverbal feedback. Um, when you're asked. Um, so make sure you're participating. Um, when you go out and break out groups, make sure that you are communicating with your group members, that you're participating, um, that if you have any questions, you can ask me questions, you can use the chat box, but make sure you, that chat box is used thoughtfully. That means the comments are respectful and the comments have to deal with the topic we're talking about in class as we're going through that. Um, Remote instruction requires uh, more self-discipline than in-class work. You gotta make sure you're more focused, paying attention. You got all these distractions around you that can be um, easily distracting you that you might not be paying close attention to. So you have to self-motivate yourself as well. Okay, and then, um, well, we don't have to worry about that last one. Okay, so that's just it. This is on our Canvas. I got this right here off of Canvas on our pages. Um, let me go back to the home page. So just on our Canvas home page here, if you ever want to refer back that remote learning expectations. So we have those expectations that we know of and to be expected from. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to introduce what we'll be doing for the rest of the semester in here. You might not be aware of this, but when you took the uh, matrix test um, last class and the uh, grades are already uploaded on Net Classroom, but when we took those matrix tests, that was the end of the college algebra curriculum. We finished all content and we got that done right before we went to long, long learning. What we're going to do for the rest of the, for these two weeks that we have left in the semester is you're going to work on your semester exam project and so okay so um, what we're going to be doing for the rest of the semester is you're going to be working on your semester exam project so we're not going to have a paper exam in this class we're going to have a project instead and this project is called the Desmos art project and this project is what we're going to be doing for the next two weeks and it's actually going to be due the Friday before final exams begin. So December the 11th, that Friday, is when this project will be due. And it has to invo it involves function all the different families of functions that we've learned all semester. It involves um, transformation of equations, graphing equations, and um, domain and range. So those are big themes that we've done all year long. And that's what this project is about. So I'm going to open this and share it. Okay, 
So here I want to talk first about the overview of this project and the expectations for the Desmos art project. And then I'm going to go through and show you how to do a little bit. So I'm going to introduce Desmos and show you a little bit about working on it and um, about my expectations. We're going to go over the rubric that I'll be grading this project with. It's 15% of your final grade. So it's worth, it's a high risk thing. So make sure that you pay close attention to this. And then the, at the end of class, we'll go into breakout groups where you'll be able to look for your piece of artwork that you want to reproduce. All right, so while we're, we've studied over 11 different functions and conics this, this semester, we talked about linear functions, absolute value functions, square root, cubic, cube root, rational, um, logarithms, exponential, ellipse, parabolas, hyperbolas, we've done it all. And so this project requires you to sketch graphs of this. Um, you're going to reproduce some artwork. That artwork could be a famous painting. It could be a picture, a cartoon, a logo. I've had people use their, um, their seals of their college that they plan to attend, a famous sports team that they're really passionate about, a piece of artwork that they've studied in the past, or you may create your own original artwork. So maybe you're a budding artist and you have some work that you've been doing in art class or some work that you've done, um, or maybe you just want to recreate some new artwork for this project. You may do that as well. I've also had students use selfies, um, other pictures that they've done from their phone, and they've used that and recreated it using equations. So those are different things. So you can either use a famous piece of artwork or a original piece of artwork. Um, but make sure if you use a famous piece of artwork, a, car a cartoon, a logo, et cetera, that it's in the public domain. We have to obey by copyright rules. So make sure you double check and make sure it's, it's, it's available in the public domain that you can copy that picture and use that picture. Then we're going to go to Desmos and we're going to create a account on Desmos if you do not have one yet. And then we're going to use that. We're going to set up this viewing window. I'll walk you through this in a second. We're going to set up our folders by each family. You're required to have at least two equations from each family of functions or conics. That's the minimum. You will have more than that. In fact, I've done this project probably about four, four years now. And I've never had a project turned in with less than, I think the smallest one was 50 something equations, or I don't remember the exact number, but you usually have quite a few equations on here. Most, most ones go to about 100 equations. Some have gone, depending on the complexity of work, it can go quite over 100. But that's usually what we're looking at when you're doing that. And you'll see it when I do a few examples today. I will easily get four or five equations in no time. And so you'll see how those equations build up very quickly. Just make sure that you have at least two equations for each family. And that's the minimum requirement on this. And so then we're going to reproduce this. Again, this is due December the 11th at 11.59 p.m. Um, this is your final exam. So I, late work is not accepted. It must be turned in by that date. I will not accept any other. Um, there'll be a couple assignments due periodically throughout this week and next week. Um, first one will be due tonight. Um, I mean, sorry, tomorrow, but I'm signing it tonight. Um, periodic reflections, you'll have an in-depth reflection over the project at the end, and you will actually grade yourself and do a self-grading of the rubric. I won't actually look at your score of what you do, I will determine your own score, but I'll be looking at your reasons why you gave yourself that grade. So your, your um, reflections, remember how you reflect on your learning and how you view it with a process of learning is very important to me. So that's something I'll be looking at. Um, that's reinforcing that no late work will be graded. So make sure you set those deadline. I'm actually telling people to, I would probably at the very latest, um, submit this probably by 10 p.m. on February on Friday, um, December the 11th, instead of waiting to about 11, 11:50 something, because you want to make sure it's fully submitted before that deadline. One second late, it's late and it's not graded. So I, I would, I although I've set it on Canvas at 11:59, I would, I would set, I would say to myself that's 10 p.m. deadline. So make sure you get it in there earlier than that. Because you, 
in case anything goes wrong with the computer or internet or something, you want some extra time to get that turned in. You want to be able to problem solve. Okay, that is the breakup, uh, breakup of this. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to go to desmos.com on your computer. And if you do not have an account yet, you will see this login or sign up. So if you have an account, go ahead and log in. If you don't, go to sign up, email. You can choose your school email or your personal email in case you want to use this for e portfolio for college applications later on or something like that. There's a reason why you might want to put it in your personal email. That's up to me. But the key is that name. Make sure you put your first and last name that I know you by in class. And then go through this. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything but you have to sign you have to have an account or you cannot save your work and i can't view it so you must set up account so i'll pause and give you a minute to sign up for desmos and go through this process all right so here is um our graphing calculator first thing i want to do is a few things i want to show you I gotta make this smaller so I can move my screen a little bit. Is first thing you wanna do is you wanna set that window. Now this window that we're setting here is for the um, uploading of our artwork. And so, cause I want all the pictures need to be big enough that we can get some good equations, but not too big so we get outrageous numbers. So the window that I've seen that worked best on this project is go to, uh, I hit this, to get here, you hit the wrench. Go down your x-axis. I want you to set your x-axis at negative 25 to positive 25. And set your y-axis at negative 15 to positive 15. Okay, so set your x-axis negative 25 to 25, y-axis to positive, uh, negative 15 to positive 15. And so, you should see this window here. So I'm 15, negative 15 to 15 on the y-axis, negative 25 to 25 on the x-axis. This is what we're going to upload our picture to. And we're going to center our picture. Now I've just chosen a picture off online and then I'll sh um, that I'm gonna upload uh, the American Gothic picture, um, kind of famous picture. Now to how to upload a picture, first thing you do is you go to this plus sign and you see image. You click on that and then you have to have that picture downloaded somewhere. So I have it here on my desktop. So I'm gonna open it and I see that picture, the Marin Gothic picture. Now what you wanna do once you upload, now you can just choose any random picture now if you wanna play with this that you might already have on your computer um or you can just um, make sure you make notes take notes of how i uploaded that image so that you can reproduce this later on but notice that the image is very very small it doesn't fill my it doesn't fill my screen of the 15 to negative 15 the 25 to uh, negative 25 to 25. so what you're going to do is you're going to click on the image and pick a corner so that you uh, maintain your proportions you don't want to skew the image any and you want to move that center it as best as you can so that you can use some symmetry until that your picture takes up about one of those images so depending on how it is you want this picture as big as you can but where it's still in that negative 15 to 15 range so now you can see it's still on my screen from that negative 15 to 15 and i've taken it up it's okay that i don't go to negative 25 to 20 but I just wanted this. This gives me a big enough image to look at. Now, once I've set my picture, that's what the, the that's, that window of, um, is all that window is used for, is to set up this picture. Now, when I start doing my equations, I'm gonna be changing my window. I'll be moving it around. I'll be zooming in so I can see the equations really closely. So I can get a good image of what's going on and I can get really close. So this image is gonna constantly change but I, you need to use that original framework when you first set up your picture and once you um, get it in. So now that I have my picture set at this, I'm not gonna move the picture around again. And so that's what I'm gonna keep that picture there for the rest of the work. 
and then you also, as you start writing equations, um, you'll always check what your artwork looks like by turning off the picture and then turning it on. So I can just click on this little image here to turn my picture on and off as I go through this. So that's the first thing that we'll have to do. Okay, now next thing that, um, that we wanna do is I wanna show you how to actually write in equations. So I'm gonna zoom in on this linear equation, this straight line here for the rooftop, and I'm gonna work on finding an equation that matches that. So I, you can hit this plus to zoom in, and I'm just gonna kinda of center this on my page, and I'm gonna try this black line here. I'm gonna to try to write an equation for that line there. So I notice it's linear, it's a straight line, so I need an equation of a line. I notice it's going up, so it has a positive slope. And I notice if I extend this out, it's gonna cross somewhere over here. So that tells me it's gonna cross a little bit before 14, maybe 14 and a half or something as a y-intercept. So I might choose, say, y equals x plus 14.5, okay? And that gives me an idea, so I can get this line here. Now I need to transform this so it slides over here and it matches up to that black line. So that tells me that in order to move this, my y-intercept needs to increase. So I might try, say, 14.9. And I look at that and I say, oh, that looks pretty darn close. Zoom in a little bit better. And you can look at it and see how well it lines up with the black line. I look pretty close lined up with the black line as I go across. And I say, okay, that might be a good equation. But if you'll notice, I have a problem. I only wanted this piece to be a line. I didn't want the line to extend out in all directions. How you change that is you adjust the domain of the, pro of the equation. So I want to change this so that it starts here and ends here. And so I, so I don't want to see all of this. Now, in order to do this, what you need to do is go back to your equation. You're going to add in a curly bracket. When you do these curly brackets, they affect the domain and range of the function that you're graphing. And you want to say, okay, where is the smallest X I won't graph? So I'm going to put about right here. Now I'm just holding down, right clicking on this line at that point to figure out that order pair. Now I want to do the smallest X. So I'm going to use that negative 6.14. So I'm going to go back to my equation here and write negative 6.14 needs to be less than my X. And then I look up here at the top of the roof and say, okay, here's the corner where it needs to end. So I click on it again, right clicking, so I can get that order, that order pair, and that's negative 1.43. So I need to end at negative 1.43. And then you'll see, that now I've had that linear equation at the beginning and ending here. I've only graphed that part of the roof. So we have that piece graphed. So that's how you can graph equations. Now, some of you might have noticed, hey, wait, this looks like an absolute value graph, a V-shaped graph. So instead of using a linear equation to do it, maybe you want to use an absolute value equation. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So clicking over here gets me down to a new equation. Now I'm going to do the bottom of the roof, this, this bottom line here on the roof. And I want to do this as an um, absolute value equation. Now, one thing I want to show you that you're going to use quite a bit in this is something called sliders. Sliders let you slide your equation left and right, up and down, flip it over, do the reflection. So it's all those transformations on Desmos can be done using sliders. Now, how to do sliders, first you have to identify what type of equation that you want to do. So if I wanted to do this, um, bought the, the pitch of the roof that's a v-shape which is an absolute value I'm going to do an absolute value equation so I'm going to do y equals now I have to remember my transformation to absolute value I can have a value in front of my absolute value and then x minus h close absolute value 
plus k. So I'm using my standard forms of these functions. So that's my standard form of the absolute value, where the a, if it's positive, it's, it's, it's a v-shape up. If it's negative, it's v-shape down. If um, a, as a becomes larger, the graph becomes skinnier. As h becomes smaller, closer to zero, the graph becomes wider. So I have this. And then the h and k changes my vertex of my graph. So when you put in letters besides X and Y, instead of numbers, you make sliders. Now, no, it says add sliders. You just put add here. And you'll see it has formed an absolute value graph. And as I click on this and move this around, I can make my V skinnier or wider. I can reflect it when it becomes negative. I can reflect it down. So I definitely want a, a negative reflection down. Then this H moves it left and right. So I can move this slider over and I can move it left and then I can move it up with my K. And so I can get closer and closer to this roof line. But I also notice a problem here. As you can see, my sliders by default is at negative 10 to 10, but I need to go up here to that close to that negative 14, that 15, that, I mean, that positive 15 that we have, 14 or something. So to change the length of your sliders, you click on the number that you want to address, and I can just pipe in a 15. And so now I can move this all the way up closer to the 15. So let me zoom in. So I now have this V shape this um, absolute value graph that's getting this pitch of, the, pitch of the roof a little bit closer. And that's what we're doing now. So I'm doing that second part of the roof using the absolute value equation. And I used sliders to help me do this. And so you can move it around if you wanna get a little bit closer. Let's see. That looks pretty good. Let's see if 15 goes better. Uh, I'll say 14, four, 1.44. I'm a little bit higher than I might want, so I might go down here and say 12.957. You can play with that. So I think that pretty much zoomed in pretty good. As you notice, you're not gonna get perfect but you can get pretty lined up pretty well. So I have that kind of zoomed in. Now, the only problem is that sliders there helped us find the equation faster than if I had to do it like I did the first time when I had to just plug in numbers and change it around. So especially when you have quite a, quite a bit of changes, left, right, up and down movement, sliders are helpful. But the problem is I can't leave my equation like this. I have to go down here and now once I figured out the A value, the H value, and the K value I want, I need to redo this equation, plugging in those values. So I'm going to replace A with negative 1, absolute value of X minus H, but H is a negative, so that becomes X plus 1.44. Close my absolute values. And plus K, K is 12.97, so plus 12.97. And you'll see that that red line is now right above this blue line. And so that's the equation I'm going to use. And then once you get that, you just close these sliders. That way you can use the letters H, A, H, and K later on. That's our standard form. So you just have to close those out and get rid of that slider. So now you have the equation of that absolute value for this piece of the graph. But of course, we still have problems. My picture of my graph, the line is, is, is absolutely by, by default, it goes on forever and ever. The domain is negative infinity to infinity. So I gotta fix this domain so I can get, I don't go through their faces. So I zoom in to where I need to see. I wanna figure out, okay, so this roof line looks like it meets her hair about here. So the X value is negative 5.71. So I do my, go back to my equation, do curly bracket negative 5.71 is less than x. And then I go over here and say, okay, it meets in his face about here. That's 2.14. So go back to the equation. Less than 2.14, I believe. 
And now I have this image. So I can go back, look at my roof, and there's the starting of my roof. So I've done two equations here in no time, and I'm starting at my equations. Questions so far? All right, so now in your Desmos, you, don't, you might not have a picture yet, that's okay. The next thing I want you to do, and I do want you to do this to Desmos, it's a requirement that we have a folder made for each of our types of functions. So as you can see, I've already made a linear equation, I made an absolute value equation. So I need a folder so I can put these in. You're gonna to have to divide, you know, to take all your equations that you make in your picture and put them in these folders. To add a folder, you just click on this, like I did to have a start a new equation. But instead of typing in an equation, you hit the plus button and you go to the folder option. And then you name your folder. So our first folder is gonna be linear functions and then enter. And then I'm gonna click this arrow button that closes that folder. So I have a linear equation here. So I can take this linear function and if you right click on it, you can drag it into your linear folder. So now it's in my linear folder. When I close it, you don't see that equation anymore. So I've input my linear function into that equation. All right, so we're gonna to go to our next folder. Next required equation is the absolute value function. So make a folder title in it, absolute value functions. And then of course we have this absolute value function. So I'm gonna drag it into my absolute value equation and close it. Repeat these for all the required 11 functions. I'll be adding them in here. As you can see me type them in, you can type them in on your computer. And then we'll, once we get all these folders put in, we'll come back to doing some more talks about graphing, such as shading and um, other things that you need to, know, need to know about our equations. So again, periodically, you just wanna save your work. Um, you can name it if you want to, um, save it as, so you can change your name on it as you want to save it. I want to go off of this. Okay. So here I just clicked on it and then I can title this as most example, whatever you want to tie it. So I would ideally want you to title this with your name and so name, Esmo's art project, okay? And save that. So now you can see it's saved as with your name and your Desmos art project and you save it. So make sure that you periodically do this because I've had students in the past lose 50 or so equations because they closed down or their computer died and they forgot to save. And that's a lot of work that you do not want to have to go back and redo. So please, please just get in the habit of very periodically, pretty often saving so that you do not lose work. All right, next thing I want to talk about is I want to zoom in on the top of this roof in between their two faces. So this piece of the roof on this um, few faces here. Now I'm going to show you how to do some shading so that we can shade in this roof area. Um, I do require some shading that goes into this project. You do not have to shade everything, but um, I have found that people who have shaded a lot, let's show you this one example that a student did last year for me. Um, this is their picture um, that they did last year. As you can see, this is the picture that uh, that's actually color picture. Now I'm gonna turn it off. There's the shading that they did. So you can see it's very neat. They've shaded in, but they didn't shade in everything. I don't require all shading in, just some sort of little bit of shading going on. So you don't have to shade in everything. So I'm gonna show you how to shade in this piece of this roof. So first thing I notice is it has a horizontal line. So I know horizontal lines are Y equals. And it looks to be before uh, about a five point, I mean, 4.5. It's, you know, halfway in between 
the four and the five. So I'm gonna go to my equation. So I'm gonna start a new equation over here. I'm gonna do y equals, and I'm thinking maybe a 4.5. So I'm gonna do a 4.5 here. I zoom in and see I'm a little too high. So I need to move this graph down. So I'm just going to move it down to maybe a 4.4. See how that works? That looks pretty good, zoom. So I'm gonna zoom out and see. That looks like it's pretty zoomed in, pretty nice and neat. Um, to shade a graph, all you do is instead of doing an equation, you do an inequality. And I wanna shade above this line, so I want numbers, I wanna shade everything greater than 4.4. So I'm gonna change that less than to a greater than. But notice if I just do greater than, my line is dashed. So to make that line solid, I have to do greater than or equal to. And now my line is about solid again. But I have another problem. I have my shading, but my problem is I have to fix my domain and range so that I only shade that one piece of the roof I want. So we're gonna start by doing just like we did on that last example. We're gonna to go to the endpoints of the line I want. So I'm gonna click on this, right click, and I see it ends at negative 3.5. So I'm gonna go over here, curly bracket, negative 3.5 is less than X. And then I'm gonna go over here to his face and see that it matches up about here at 3.34. So, which is less than 3.34. So I've limited this. But as you can see, it still keeps going up and up. So this is the first time that we're gonna to have to actually limit our range as well. This limit our domain, but now we're gonna to need to limit our range by the top piece of this roof here. So I'm gonna to go to another equation. I gotta figure out what's the equation of that top piece of the shaded roof. And so it looks to be just short of six. So I'm gonna do y equals try six. And then I need to bring that down. So maybe a 5.7, oh, that's too far down. So a 5.8, oh, that's getting pretty close. So 8.2, let's see if three does better. There you go. So a 5.84 looks like a pretty good fit here. So that's, that's our equation that we wanna look at. So I know that's the highest Y value I want. So go back to my shading equation and I've put in curly brackets my domain. So now I'm gonna add another set of curly brackets for my, my range. Now I want my range so that Y is less than that 5.84 that I had set up earlier. Okay. Let me turn this off so you can see that. So now we have this part is our shaded region. I'll bring this down so I can use it easier. You'll find that you'll often bring your picture down to by where your equations that you're working with. So I have this piece right now. But if I'm looking at my picture, I still have a problem. Because I'm shading, although I'm shading the roof, part of the roof is going onto his face. So I need to fix this. So I'm gonna to have to set another limitation on my domain so that I will um, stop here at his face. So to figure that out, I'm gonna go to an equation to kind of look at his shape of his face. So I'm kind of looking at his face here and it looks, maybe that's a, pro, a parabola. So it kind of looks like a little U shape. Um, I'm gonna see how that fits. So I'm gonna try a quadratic equation. Um, you can pick whichever form. I'm going to do vertex form. So I'm going to do y equals, and I'm going to use sliders again. So a x minus h quantity squared plus k. So I'm going to get some sliders in here. So it just starts me with my basic parent function. And I want this to be over here. So I need to move them over. So I'm gonna kind of line it up. Need to move that vertex up closer to his neck. Oh, 
it's looking like this this parabola is not going to work too well as it is so maybe i need to make it a little wider and i see that it looks on now although the neck is not matching up well this piece by his neck looks like it's kind of going pretty close so i'm going to zoom in a little bit and see if i need to move this around slightly to get a slightly better setup with his neck So my zooming is not working well, so I'm going to type it in. So you can just type in different numbers till you get it kind of lined up pretty well. So it looks like that's following his neckline. Just that piece there looks like it's following pretty closely. Now it doesn't <coughs> look good out here at the bottom, but that's okay. We can limit this equation to only showing that piece from below his ear to about his mouth length. And then we can limit our domain. So again, anytime you use sliders, you have to go back to your equation, plug in your data. My H is 5.12 squared, and my K is 2.5. Then I can close my sliders. And now I need to limit this graph. So I'm going to limit this graph to looks like about 2.76 to about 3.34. And now we have this limited picture here of that graph. Oops. No, no, notice I actually, I was trying to click on that and I deleted my graph. Anytime, that'll happen quite a bit. So you just hit this uh, ref, uh, undo and it takes that equation right back. So that undo button is gonna come in very handy. All right, so I have that, that picture there. So now I need to go back to my shading picture. So this is my shading graph. And I'm gonna add another restriction. And I want it, I want to show, I want this to be to the left or less than that red line. So I'm going to add that restriction that Y needs to be less than my quadratic equation 0.6x minus 5.12 squared plus 2.5. And now that I finished that shading in there, you will see that when I zoom in, I have now just shaded that piece of the roof. Also, I noticed that red line for his face kind of doesn't match with the rest of the roof color. So I, again, right clicked on my, my quadratic equation here, and it gives you some things that you can change. I can change the color, so I'm gonna change it back to purple. You can also adjust here. This is just how deep the color is, the richness of the color, the opaqueness. One is pretty thick. Um, it's easier if I show about the picture on here. So one is pretty thick. And then if you do right click, I like 0.2, it's very, very shadow. It, you know, it's not that very thick. Um, 0.5, you get a little darker. One is usually a pretty dark color. You can do the thickness of your lines, very thick line, a very thin line. So you can adjust the thickness and thin of your line. Down here on the fill, this is the shaded region. So I can make the shading darker or lighter so a point one is very light shade so you can like address like colors here's a one a very dark shade you are limited on the colors that you can use these are the only colors that you can use but you can affect like how light impacts something by changing the value of how dark this shade it is so you can adjust this and that's just right clicking over here so now you can see my image we have completed part of that and we've now had that shading. I'm no longer shading his face, so I've now figured out how to do the shading. So that's another very common characteristic that you need to work with.
So let me get these equations put where they belong. So this was our basic equation here was a line. Even though it's inequality, we do put that in our linear functions. And so I'm going to move this up to my linear folder. So you want to open it to, to drop it in. And then move it up and I drop it into that linear folder and that can close. I also have that quadratic equation that I need to put in here. So that's my parabola. So I'm opening it and I want to take this quadratic and drop it into my parabola equation. So when you have all your folders closed, I can't see the equations, but I can go by and open them. And I can easily see that we've already come up with, you know, four equations really fast here. And we've only done a very small piece of our picture. As you can see, here's our original picture. And I've only done this piece. So you can see how the equations will add up pretty quickly as you work through this. And then you can adjust your colors as you want to see fit as you go through. Any questions? Here are some pictures of what some of my kids have done in the past um, that you can see. These are some personal ones. They did their name and they made a image on it. Um, the requirements have changed, like um, the ones that I showed you earlier. Um, they didn't have conics, so it was kind of limited. Some people have, sometimes I have conics, sometimes I don't. Here's some, uh, this is original artwork um, that one student did, but this is again, of course, not original. They're doing the Statue of Liberty. Um, original artwork, this one's not. I think that's Pocahontas, if I remember correctly. And then this is from Up. Okay, done. Here are some um, sports teams, um, universities that's been done in the past. So um, in this one, I think, I want to say this was Lion King, but I can't remember. I'm thinking this was Lion King. So you have a few that you can choose that you can do. So here are some examples that of what my, some of my kids have done in the past with this. I'll give you some ideas. Also to give you some ideas, Let me go back to my all right so another short because remember i said that if you want to do a famous piece of artwork or something like that it's very important that it's a, it's a public domain and so one thing i found is here this is the met museum and it is all of their public domain pictures. It's just a list of hundreds and hundreds of public domain um, paintings and stuff that you can use. Um, so let me copy this into our chat so that you can have access to it. So this is um, public domain. Famous artwork. So here is some. Um, it's a um, so you have this link that if you want to, uh, this is um, public domain pictures that you are allowed to use um, to look at. If you don't go from this, you might have to look somewhere else. But always verify that it is public domain. As you can see, if I click on some of these pictures, a lot of times it'll show this public domain. Um, if not, you might have to research a little bit online to make sure it's public domain and it's allowed for you to be used. So um, that's one thing that you can do. Of course, if you choose your own personal artwork, you don't have to worry about public domain. It's, it's, you can use that. So you're free to use that. I found that a lot of some of those pictures I showed you a minute ago, they were not public domain. I wasn't too high, highly on checking that when I was overseas. And so some of that artwork you might not be allowed to use now um, because it's, it's not in public domain. So be careful about that. So that's one thing to check on is make sure that your, um, your work is appropriate for licensure reasons. Um, now, next thing I wanna look at is how am I going to grade this project? This is the rubric that I will use to grade your semester exam, this art project. 
This is the requirement um, at the end, Friday on um, by Friday, December the 11th, you'll be required to co complete this and self evaluate yourself over these criteria. And of course, you'll have to paste in your link to your your Desmos project here. And what, what we're looking at, these are the criteria I'm looking at, how it's divided up and what your grade is going to be determined. Um, and you're going to write something. You're going to put in here in parentheses, like how much you think you earned out of the 10 points and what areas that you need to improve in on this category and where you excelled at in this category. Again, reflection is very important. So the more detail that you put in here, the better. Um, I won't go by necessarily what your percentage is. Usually I've noticed that my grades are quite different than what some people self-evaluate. Some people evaluate themselves much harsher than I think they need to, and some are much more lenient than I think. So it just depends on your personality. But I'm more looking at your reflection of what you say. So I do want that in here. So the first criteria is project management. This is a, it's a semester exam project and it will take you some time and you will find yourself working a little bit outside of class. You can't, you cannot finish this, I think, in, in the five classes that we have left. It's just not possible. So you will have to do work outside of class. Um, so getting that work done on time and meeting the deadlines are very important. You'll have periodic assignments in, um, Canvas, like our first assignment today, um, which I'll talk about later in a, in a moment after going through this, is part of these deadlines. So you'll have a couple deadlines. Our next peak deadline, I think, is Friday. And so you have all these different deadlines to reach at and to look at. So meet, so student meets all required deadlines for this project. So maybe you'll say, okay, I got an eight out of 10, I think, on this because what I need improvement is I was behind on um, getting my rough draft turned in. I turned it in on Saturday instead of Friday because I wanted to finish up this last piece of, you know, one corner of the house. Maybe I want to make sure I got the house finished first. And so I needed to make sure I managed my time better and to get that turned in. I excelled at getting all the other deadlines turned in. I turned in the final project on time. I even maybe had a little time extra to get it done. So maybe you can talk about that excelling at. The big chunk of your grade, 35% of your grade, is determined by the family of functions and transformations. So this is basically the equations. So the artwork shows a student understands how to transform. So you, got, you know how to transform your equations. Um, you understand the shapes of your functions, our 11 families of functions and conics that we have, and you picked the best equation in that situation. So you didn't just put a square root and only use the tail of it, and you didn't have the curve of it when a linear equation would have worked just as bad, just as well, or linear equation would work better, but you used the square root because you needed a square root equation because you didn't have one. So I'm looking at just choosing the right functions for that piece of the, of the picture and it fits well and that you're, that you're pretty closely aligned with the original artwork that you're using, the artwork that you're choosing. And so the details are important. So you're zooming in and getting pretty close and detailed on your work. So that's gonna be that 35 there. The key knowledge and understanding number two is inequalities. So this is where the shading comes in. So you understand how to set up the inequality, when should it be less than, when should it be greater than, how to do shading um, so that you can impact, so you can have emphasis on the visual impact of the, of the picture. So you're choosing those shadings where they're most needed to have the big, biggest impact. So again, you don't have to shade the entire, doc, entire picture. Just choose really good pieces that you want to shade. Um, key knowledge and understanding number three, domain and range. So your art project shows that you understand how to, how to limit your domain and range restrictions on your equations so that you can have a picture. Um, so, how, so you can figure out your limits of your domain and range. I talked about domain and range of basically some functions today when you, and a little bit of inequalities. You notice it got more complex when we did inequalities. Um, when you get conics, you'll find conics are also complex a little bit. I want you to try to discover how to do inequalities with conics on your own. But that's 15% of the grade. 
key knowledge understanding number four is 10% of the grade and that's just the technology. So that's the, that becoming familiar with Desmos, using Desmos um, to use that technology to understand mathematics, to understand how when we look at a piece of artwork, you maybe you can start seeing functions and seeing equations in your artwork, hopefully later on. So that's the 10%. And then 15%, the last 15% is a reflection. As you know, it's very important that you understand how you learn and what you're learning in the process. So my reflections are extremely important to me. So the reflection explains the student's own thinking and learning process as well as implement implications for future learning. Reflection is an in-depth analysis of the learning experience that you did over these next two weeks. The value of the derived learning to yourself or to others and the enhanced enhancement of the student's appreciation for functions, domain and range, transformations, those key themes that we're talking about in this project. And again, you'll also reflect on your reflection on where did you uh, need improvement on and where did you do well. So that is the main grading rubric. Before I talk about the reflection in more detail, are there any questions over the rubric itself? Nobody has questions. Good. All right, let me go back to the reflection. All right, so this is going, your final reflection that you're gonna do is needs to be written in paragraph form. It's like a mini essay, only required by three paragraphs. Um, you're gonna use Time New, New Roman font, 14 point font for it. And you're gonna write it in paragraph form. I've provided this reflection page as a way to help you start thinking about it when you come time to the reflection. This is best to be done after you finish all the artwork. So hopefully you'll finish the artwork by Thursday, December the, the 10th. And so December the 11th, you can get your um, reflection written. I want you to use appropriate math vocabulary as you're writing your reflection. I've included some key words that you might show up quite often in these reflections, such as transformations, um, slope, um, point slope form, y-intercept, you're looking at symmetry in the equations, um, how that helped you figure out you know, one equation, maybe you found it symmetric on the x-axis to the other equation. Um, talking about different graphs, the forms of the graphs, your domain, your range, et cetera. So using those key terminology that we've learned throughout the semester as you write this, uh, this uh, reflection. Um, then I included here about 21, yeah, 21 questions that kind of leading questions to help you start thinking about what to write about. Your three paragraph um, reflection should include about 10 of these. Um, I found that students easily fit 10 of them in there because um, you can just write a sentence or two over each of these, each of the 10 that easily gives you the, um, the reflection. I do not want you to write it like this. Do not give me point one, answer that question, then move to point two and answer that question. I want your, it written as an essay. So in paragraph form, your final um, reflection should be written. Here are some like leading questions as you can read through these on your own. I'll just read a couple of these. Um, I found that my understanding of um, quadratic equations really improved during my work on this project because, and then talk about how did, what may, why did your understanding of what a quadratic equation is change so drastically as you work through this project. Uh, I found the process of blank was an important tool in my learning. And so that helped you better understand this understanding of this concept. So these are just some different things. Um, I highly suggest you kind of go through these, maybe do a quick answer and check at the end, and then that will help you when you write your essay form. So that's what I'm looking at for your reflection. Again, that's 15% of the grade on the project. For the remainder of class, we're going to work on our first 
assignment here. So Desmos art project assignment number one. We've already uh, completed, if you followed the instructions in class today, you already completed part of this. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna break you out to breakout groups in a moment. And in your breakout groups, you're gonna kind of throw ideas off each other. But your first task is that you need to upload a artwork to Desmos. So you need to decide what artwork you think you wanna do. Now do not start making equations yet. Do not start trying to graph it because any artwork you chose has to be approved by me first. So what this assignment here, what you're putting in is your choice. Some people are putting, are choosing one or two options um, so that um, in case they, in case their first artwork is not appro approved. Now I will disapprove artwork for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's not in public domain. And so I might, might tell you, you cannot use that project, that picture. Um, number two reason is it might be too complex and I don't think you can get it completed realistically in two weeks. And so you don't want to choose too complex artwork. Like, you know, here, if I look at the Mets and I was looking at some of these artworks, there are some pretty artwork here that is just beautiful. It's just amazing artwork, but realistically, something with this much detail like here. This, you have all these different people, all these different lines, there's no way. This would take you months to complete. There's no way that this would be approved. It's way too complex, it's way too much information, this would be way too hard to complete. So if you turn in something like this, even though it's under public domain, I would not approve it because I don't think you can get it completed in the two weeks. Um, another reason it might not be approved is it might be too simplistic. Maybe it does, I don't think you'll have enough room to get as many equations or sh different shapes of equations. So I need to make sure that all families of the equations are represented. So if you um, cannot, if I don't feel like all 11 families of functions can be represented realistically in your picture, I might say, okay, I can't approve this picture and you have to go find another one. So I don't want you to start graphing or trying to find any equations yet because that might be wasted work if your project is not approved. Um, but go ahead and um, find your first choice or you might do a first and second choice if you won't. And so I can get those and start looking at them. If you turn them in early, I'll start looking through them um, probably tomorrow and start sending out approvals. Um, so as soon as you get the approval on it, you can start working on the actual um, work and I'll just do a um, some on your um, canvas assignment this assignment here when you submit it on a comment I'll either write approved or not approved and that's how you need to know if you need to change your artwork or not so you'll check this assignment for my comments um, now how you're going to submit this assignment I want you to do a Google Doc on the Google Doc put your name at the very top then put a link to your Desmos project um, in your Desmos project, before you give me that link, make sure you've saved in your picture of your artwork that you want to do. Make sure you've centered that in on the window, that, tw that negative 25 to 25, fifth, negative 15 to 15 window, as big as possible in that window. So you have it centered in, nice and pretty, that artwork, and you've made all of the folders for our 11 family of functions in your Desmos project. And then once you have that, after you put your name on your Google Doc, then your link. Underneath that, I want you to write a short one paragraph reason why this artwork, why you chose this piece of art. Why was this important to you? Why do you want to spend the next two weeks reproducing this piece of work? And so that's the last thing that I want you to do. And that's today's assignment. So you're going to work on that. I included links to the project, those pages that I just went over with you, the rubrics, so that you can look at that. I've also included here links to some short videos on how to use Desmos to do certain things um, so that you have this as well. But that's not part of the assignment. Those are for your information to help you on the project. So all you're doing right now is you're finding out your piece of artwork, uploading it to Desmos, making sure you have your photos rate, um, aligned on Desmos, saving that link to a Google Doc with your name, the link, and then a paragraph, reflect, a paragraph um, reflection on the reason why this piece of artwork, why you chose this piece of artwork.
and then I'll approve or disapprove it um, based on my knowledge of what what could work or not work. So, um, and also make sure um, when you, when you submit this on Canvas, please actually send me an invitation so I can have access to your Google Docs. I have found a lot of times people submit Google Docs on um, Canvas and then I can't open them. So do make sure I have access or you have invited me to have access to that Google Doc so I can look at it. Question over this assignment before I give you out to breakout groups. All right, so 